All right, everybody, welcome back. This is lecture 27, part three. We're gonna talk briefly about mobile gaming. Uh, mobile gaming is now the biggest part of the game industry. It's uh, estimated to be about a $70 billion industry last year. Uh, overall, it take, it's about 45% of total gaming revenue. So to give you some scale there, it's estimated that a third of all app downloads are games. Um, almost 75% of the spending on mobile is game-based and over half of all mobile app users play games so it's i mean smartphones have the single biggest install base in the world um, and of course uh, lots and lots of games of all different kinds being played there um, in the united states time spent on mobile devices has now surpassed television in terms of media consumption this means that most of us spend the uh, in america we spend more time looking at our phones and fooling with around with things on our phones than we spend watching television, which uh, is a very recent change. Up until very recently, television, even uh, with the advent of all the other forms of entertainment, had still been the most consumed media in the U.S. And today, it is stuff on our fancy smartphones. So you can see why this is the biggest part of the game industry today in terms of revenue. Uh, the mobile graphics quality has improved in your console levels. It's very impressive. Um, when we looked at mobile games in the stream, I showed off uh, the Call of Duty game, which while it kind of controlled was kind of wonky, but as far as graphics go, it was certainly serviceable. I mean, it's not ray tracing NVIDIA 2060 graphics card level, but it's good enough for most people who just want to play a quick game of something. Um, and that's the biggest trick, you know, the, the best game system I've got is the one I've got on me all the time. And when are, when don't we have our smartphones? And so that's one of the reasons there that mobile gaming is so large. In addition to just the graphic quality improvements that have come about as smartphone technology keeps advancing is the fact that almost every genre of game is now represented in some form or another. First person shooters, RPGs, strategy games, adventure games, indie games, uh, uh, whatever kind of game you can think of, right, is probably available. Now, mobile does include tablets, so you got to bear that in mind, but the smartphones are big enough now and the screens are big enough that most of this stuff is taking place on the phones. Uh, they've also added subscription models. So they've added things like the Apple Arcade. So for five bucks a month to Apple with no ads, you can play over 100 games. Uh, Google Play Pass is the same setup, five bucks a month. Uh, we'll give you access to a whole bunch of games and apps with no ads. So we're also seeing that subscription model that we saw sort of start up with the PlayStation Now and the Xbox Game Pass and the Switch Online with the classic games is now starting to filter to the mobile space. And this sort of mirrors what has happened with Netflix and Spotify, where a lot of us are choosing to uh, buy a subscription to access, access media content as opposed to owning it. So that's sort of a big change. Uh, finally, I did want to talk briefly about the mobile companies did go into VR in the uh, first part of the 2010s, but has since sort of backed off of that. So Google did Google Cardboard, which was a cheap sort of fun entry point to VR that utilized the mobile phone. And then in 2016, they added the Google Daydream, which again, you slot your phone into the headset to try to, to use it as your uh, view in your, dis your head mounted display. Uh, but they since discontinued that in 2019. Samsung had done a Gear VR that used Samsung phones uh, and worked in collaboration with Oculus, but they've also since abandoned the platform. Uh, the mobile phones just simply aren't as powerful as the PC or the PSVR headsets um, because they're based on whatever technology is available in the phones. And so as a result, they, they were sort of a, they kind of pushed this for a little bit, see if people were interested. Uh, most people were happy with their phones as they were, and, and if, if they were serious about VR, tended to migrate toward or, or you know tied toward a more uh, viable or a more robust platform, I should say, like the Vive or the Index or the Oculus platforms or the PSVR. So there doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in phone-based VR at this time, though you did see a lot of success with the AR, the augmented reality games, things like Pokemon Go and the Harry Potter game where they take advantage of the phone on the camera to project graphics on top of a real setting and they do it pretty well. So mobile VR, it doesn't look like it's going to be the wave of the future anytime soon, but uh, they did do a lot of exploring of VR on the mobile in the first part of the 2010s. 
and with that, we'll wrap up mobile gaming today. Just a reminder, it is the biggest part of the game market. It's got the biggest user base. Everyone's got their credit cards attached to it. Uh, and every kind of game is available. And the, the again, the graphics are good enough for most people. Um, so you're going to see a lot of gaming migrate to that platform over time. All right, we'll come back and talk about some new more stuff in part three. Thanks.